Wait, what's going on YouTube? It's Johnny P all day. Home of the painfully honest knife reviews. And today, you might have a little painful honesty. But, it's all going to be honest honesty. So, this one right here. This is the Pearson Custom Knives Fighter. At least that's what I think it's called. I had to go to um, Scab over at Choir Boys Cutlery Outdoors. I had to go to his channel and um, pick off some of the stats on this thing because... I don't have any. This thing was um, uh, loaned by Thrasher's Garage. Check out the channel. Um, and he was nice enough to allow me to check this blade out. So upon inspection of the blade, I did find something. I'll get into that. But before we get into that, let's get into this. The weathered sheath is something done on purpose. Um, this is done by Ryan Pearson. I believe that's the the name, yes, Ryan Pearson is the one who is making the knives. And I believe the kid's like a, a auto mechanic or something like that in his regular job. And then he just decided, oh, I guess I'll just start making some pretty badass knives and toila. So that's, um, that's his story. So let's get into this thing. Aside from the sheath, which is done really well, it's kind of got like a machete um, top slide sheath. Um, I, I think he did a really good job on it. I, I really, really like the weathered look. This isn't something that happens from carry. This is something that happens on purpose. And it just did a really good job. Um, the blade steel on this is a great blade steel. Um, so let's see. Let's look at all this stuff. So CPM 3V. And if he treated right, this stuff will go on forever. But we're going to get into a little something about that. Um, the overall length, I believe it's around five and a quarter. I didn't measure. Um, it is, I believe a nine and three quarter blade length and thickness, I think is like seven thirty seconds. Um, and that's pretty much all I have on there. Now I took this blade out, not out, but just out of the box when it first came here. I, I did like a, uh, like a guess what's coming to the channel as far as reviews thing. And I didn't really go over the knife. So today is the first time I'm actually going to use it. So far, all I've done and hold all I've done is hold it. And I have to tell you that this, um, he did a phenomenal job on this grip. It is super, super duper comfortable. I mean, that's beautiful. What he did with the contouring here to make it work for pretty much any hand size on the planet. Um, fantastic. He did uh, some G10 scales, right? With black pins, I like that. And some black liners. Now, a lot of times you'll see, like I, I did one of his other ones and it had colored scales with colored pins and it looked pretty good to me, right? Um, so I like the fact that he uses uh, colored pins as well. But this is what I found during inspection. Inspection. Um, you could even possibly see it. Uh, possibly. Let's see. Right here, there is a blade warp. Um, so I don't know if this happened from usage with Brandon or Scab gave it a pretty good once over and it could have happened there. But it is. I'm going to find the exact spot um, right here. So right here is the blade warp. And so it was, it either took one hell of a shot to make that happen or the heat treat just wasn't set in perfectly on the edge. It's a pretty small warp, but doing this, you can absolutely feel it. Um, that shouldn't be there with this steel, but crap happens. It just happens. So, I mean... You can't blame that on his knife making abilities because as you can see the guy made a pretty cool looking knife right now design aspect what do i think about it? i think from like from like here on i really like it there's something about here that's throwing me off um and i did have an issue with right here where it's just all 90 degree edges and i was holding it and doing stuff and i was like oh that's kind of sh sharp on my finger listen we can't, there's background noises, never mind. But that you can hear finger scraping on that because 
it is, it's pretty sharp. It's pretty sharp. But then when I was gra grabbing into the grip, I was realizing that even when I'm really gripping, my hand isn't on it. So to say that that would be a problem is being eh, nitpicky. It's not a problem. Um, I could see it being a problem if you wanted to use it as a reverse fighting grip. I could see maybe digging into it a little bit, but that would be your pinky. And this is where the problem would be. So that's not a problem. The only way I guess you could call it a problem is if you were choking up to do some fine work. Um, but why not just use a side grip? Um, so this problem is honestly not a problem. So this thing is a harpoon style. He does something different with his harpoon that you don't see a lot of makers do. Um, you can see how it's like kind of round right here, right? It goes from... And this is how I design my spines as well. Goes from here all the way here in a continuous line. It's really nice. But then he has this curve down before the harpoon. Now, I don't know if it's going to pick it up, but you can see right here at this point, it goes from a fluid line to an extra dip. Now, I don't know if that's from grinding on the round wheel and that just going in a little deeper, if it's something he meant where he wanted his different than somebody else's. But it definitely has more of a sweep right here than you would normally see normally it would come around this way well a lot of places would just not even have this perfect line right here they just go flat from that point i think he did a better job curving it and this i'm not sure if he did that on purpose or not but either way it's i mean pretty cool when you if you're gonna use it with a finger forward you're never gonna skim with this because it's too big but your finger literally dives into that little slot so if you really needed to do something with that maybe you wanted to do some peeling um, your finger, well, my finger, cause they're really long, but, um, from there, I mean, look at that contour that fits perfectly. Is that a grip I would ever use? Probably not, but if I needed to, I could, um, there's a ton of real estate for a side grip and the swedge is not sharpened. Therefore you can grab this thing anywhere. You can lock it up on your forearm and now you can do some really nice tight work. Um, I wish I knew how the warp got there because then it would be easier to explain, all right, this is what it took for that to happen. Uh, you could even see it right there. See that in the light? You can see that warp. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to go out and use it anyway and just try not to further the warp. That's going to be our goal today. So let's take this outside and give it a couple swings. All right, so taking it outside, you get a better look at this knife in the sun. And you can really see the blade finish and how good that looks. You can see the color of the scales and how that works out. You can really, really see the liners. Um, I have to say that the double contouring here, flat spot, round spot, really, really good for a grip like this when you're doing a hard downward stab or things like that. Um, it is lanyard hold. Um, but I think, I think his contouring in this area, this whole grip area, I think is flawless. It is unflawed. There's nothing wrong with there. Um, as far as the warp, I just saw it with like the naked eye. And I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to pick it up because cameras do different thing, but right there you could literally you could you could see the warp. There is a little, you know, you could see some extra scratches where it probably took a good shot. And I don't know what kind of shot it took. So um it is not shave sharp. However, it is fair used you're not going to warp this steel a 3v um without putting some use into it so i'm not going to promise anything on the edge but being a used edge um on a big blade like this well i mean does it matter no because it's not going to be this isn't going to be made to to take four layers of leather which it still might do let's see and go through it like nothing um, a push cut, that might be a different different deal. Let's try, we got half inch of nylon rope. Let's see if we can... Uh, no, but it didn't push cut, but I'll tell you what, that went all the way through and I just had to give it a little bit of, a little bit of oomph, right? That took some tricep, but the blade is still sharp enough for that. So now we're gonna do our tests, but we have to understand that this was designed as a fighting knife. So as far as a fighting knife with fighting grips reverse grip this right here isn't digging into me so if i wanted to put if i wanted to put the backward grip if i wanted to put spine first and come through um 
so you know obviously you use your spine to defend against other other weapons so you don't jab up your edge you smash somebody's piece and now you have a forward thrust beautiful i can get a good grip on there and this part the part that it should be really digging into me so far isn't so bad in the webbing i can definitely feel the edges but first of all you're not gonna be holding it like this a lot and second of all it's not that bad the webbing in your hand is soft right so it kind of just folds around it it works in this grip your foregrip your regular grip this is one of the most comfortable grips i've ever held um i think he did he did an amazing job contouring that the um the transfer of weight is really nice the pob is is super close it's right there man this thing is this thing is nice um let's see uh reverse grip true reverse grip i have a full reverse grip i have a top grip and both are comfortable so when you're talking about fighting knives and being able to swing the blade around and make it so you can strike and thrust it feels good in the hand it feels like that's what it's designed to do Let's, um, let's do a couple thrusts since it is a fighting knife. What we wanna do is there's a hole right here, a big hole, and I'm gonna see if I can use the tip to get to that hole. And you can see I'm hitting the exact same place every time. And I'm about an inch off of my target. Get a little closer. Get a, I'm hitting the same, well that was way off, same spot so you can see the POB is literally slightly off and because it's the recurve and because there's the high point here for the harpoon it does change your point of aim on a thrust but when you're talking about defending yourself the human heart is as big as a fist right so if you're this far off of dead center you're still winning so that really doesn't matter that that that's done pretty well that's done pretty darn well if you ask me so that's good you hear that thud that's what you want that's what you want. A lot of this wood is wet because we've had days of rain, but we're gonna have a little fun with it anyway. Now we're gonna we're gonna utilize that side grip we've been talking about, and we are gonna do some pulls here. Now, uh, edge profile, it allows you to really, really dig in, um, like really, really dig in. So is this gonna be like uh, your your tight curl feather sticking knife? No, it's your fighting knife, but. Is it going to be able to to do stuff like that? Absolutely. But this thing's made to take off an arm, and that's what it can absolutely do. Um, speaking of, this is nice. This isn't waterlogged, and this isn't all hard. But let's see what it can do to it. And that is super clean on dried, hard sycamore. That is really, really nice. So this thing, without a doubt, is made to be a fighter and a straight up banger, right? Where the, the finesse tests really aren't completely necessary when you're talking about a knife like this because it's made for hitting. Ugh. Let's see, let's see. I know I have a baton around here or somewhere. I probably, I did, I brought it over there to use it, hold on. All right, let's keep going and then we're gonna test the warp in the blade and see if it's gotten worse at all. <laughs> Brandon, I apologize. If it has, I mean, if I make it worse, I apologize, but I mean, let's see, let's see, let's see. We got a couple knots here, so if, if the, the warp is going to get worse, it's going to get worse right here. If it does, we'll have to be really nice to Brandon and, and bake him a cake. So I don't want to make it worse. That's why I'm not going to go all the way through there. I got to a point where I went into the knot. Okay, we didn't change it. It's still there, still the same size. Now it's feeling up here, up here felt good. And then right here is where the warp was. And then I was trying to figure out down here if there was anything, but this piece of the blade, like it looks pretty much untouched. So I don't think we're gonna have a problem there. All right, so let's try and Let's try and come down on this one more time. And I wanna try and keep the, keep the, the damage, I guess, to the rear of the blade where it looks like it's still pretty new. Uh, you can see the the angle it's taking. It's definitely definitely a fighting blade, and you think, well, any blade can can do this, hitting it in the right. Well, it's not true. 
the blade has to be designed right to do certain tasks. And just because it's a big fat blade doesn't mean it's gonna do everything that other blades will do. Um, it's just the way it is. So like batoning, this thing, the way it's made, you can, it's a fighting blade. It's not made for this. So it's having a really rough time um, just getting through that. So what I gotta do now is take a piece of wood and wedge it see if I have a good piece if not I might have to make a piece with what's in my pocket which happens to be the Kubi um, Dugu um, but I'm gonna have to wedge and get that out of there hold on <laughs> that, that took me a minute but I finally got out of there any extra warping no it's still right there in that one spot so there's you know from from banging on it and things like that it didn't add anything like any damage so I don't know I don't know what that could have hit to make that happen but it had to be pretty hard all right so it's a fighting knife let's take a let's take a few few slashes here that was pretty good and I'm trying to see if there's going to be any bangs and dings on my hand from the handle when I swing hard and those weren't so bad. I could feel this hit my pinky, but it could have just been my grip. No, okay, so I'm feeling it. So, so this curl right here, definitely when hitting something hard, will rattle your finger, rattle you to the bone. But, I mean, who cares? It's a comfortable grip. <laughs> it's a comfortable grip. If you're hitting somebody that's as hard as a, hard as a log, then call me up and I'll come help. Um, but uh, outside of that, all still pretty good. Let's see if we can do a little chopping here. And this is where uh, it's definitely shining a little bit more. Um, and I have to say that with the thrusting, I was having a hard time keeping it in line, right? And getting to my point of aim. But um, with chopping, oh, look at that guy is in there. With chopping, I'm hitting the same spot every time and the reason is because the way this is made and then the way the belly is so far forward it allows you really really good aim I mean really really good aim so man that thing's got some crazy bite on the chop I'll tell you that but literally every single time I swing the knife it's hitting exactly where I want it to I'm not off even a little it's literally hitting the exact point that um, that I am intending to hit. And that means he did a good job um, designing the belly of this knife. Did a really good job. So it's going, man, that thing has got some bite. Um, going from one spot to the next is pretty simple. It is pretty simple indeed. Um, it's literally, I mean, it's tearing that thing right up. And I just gave it a good swing off center. I wanted to turn my target. Gave it so I could barely get it out of there. Um, and uh, I was able to hit exactly where I wanted to hit, even at an angle from a hard swing, which means I took my arm back and uh, gave it a good shot. I'll tell you, man, the bite on this thing is the bite on this thing is no joke. The good thing is the warp isn't getting any bigger. It's still right where it was, so that's a good thing. Um, man, that's crazy. I am getting some rattle in the pinky, but it's only from this curl. Now, remember, does that mean if you bought one of his knives that you'd be having that? My fingers from here to here is about 10 and three quarter inches. My hands are really big. So where your pinky is going to be hitting is completely different than mine. So your hand might be up here. Your pinky might have another freaking half inch of real estate. And you might not have any problem at all um so far i mean just e even with the even with the small stuff i can i can complain about it's pretty good i want to hit um on the swedge a couple times and see if we can carry through on that i'm going to bring you over here so you can get a good look at that so now we're going to hit it reverse because if you're if you are holding in a reverse grip where you're coming through you want to make sure that that swedge is going to be beastly and I'll tell you what, that's earning some damage points right there. You get hit with a back cut on this, 
or a forward cut in that grip, um, that right there is not going to be your best friend if you're the enemy, right? If you are the intended target, that is not going to be your best friend. <laughs> if you are, <laughs> if you are the aggressor, however, that thing you're gonna you're gonna love it. I just saw this thing sticking up right here. Let's see. Bam! Easy money. Easy freaking money. Um, yeah, getting this thing around in the hand is pretty simple. It's pretty simple. Um, let's come over here. We just got to watch out for bombs because I did see the dog out here the other day spending a little time by my target. So I got to do a ground search. All right, so there are some Roscoe-sized landmines to the left and right of my target, but we are going dead center. Oh my gosh, it was there. That was all tip. That was all tip. There we go. All right, so if you let it go, it will fly. So um, this is what I can tell you about um, Ryan Pearson. I think Ryan Pearson is up and coming. I think the more he makes, the better he's going to get. I think the more he sees people review his knives and say things like, this is a 90 degree angle, and that could be an issue, he's going to go, oh, all right, so I just won't make finger guards 90 degree angles and they'll be comfortable uh-huh they'll be way more comfortable um and you know then it comes down to mastering the heat treat um the heat treats the hardest part of knife making it's the hardest part and i just smashed on this and never furthered the one area that um was in question there was one area with a warp in it and it didn't um it didn't worsen that area at all so uh yeah i mean for it to not continue it's um i think that's pretty good because it could man right here I, I don't know if you guys can see it with the naked eye i can absolutely see it and it's like a almost like a step the way it's warped it creates like a step right here but um but all in all i think it's pretty good like if the, the question is this, okay, you know, obviously we want to make sure the design is right. We have to. That's, the design has to be right. If the design is wrong, no matter if your knife works or not, it's still bad. Just because the knife can work doesn't make it safe, right? If, if I take the floor out of a car and take the shocks out of the car and take the doors off of the car, but the motor still works and I drive down the street, it doesn't make it safe. It just means it works, right? It has to do more than just work. It has to be right. Um this right here that's just right this right here is a little too maybe just for hitting solid things yeah but it's not designed for that oh well if he didn't design it for that then what's the worry right the guy designed it for for this and it does that really freaking well so i don't know if, if we're talking um design for purpose i think he did a really good job um if you're talking about multi-purpose, it could use some rounded edges right here. It could use maybe a little bit less of a curl right here. Um, but, but damn, but damn, the thing is going to be a fighting. If, if, if I told you that if you were standing at an ATM and Bigfoot came to rob you of the $20 you just took out and you couldn't defend yourself with this, I'd be lying. Because this right here would make him do that whole shaggy and scooby zoinks type thing and run in place and then boogie um this is a this is a mean it's a mean looking knife especially if you're the one holding it and you look like you know what you're doing when you hold it um somebody's not gonna want to mess with you with this thing in your hand that's for damn sure all right so brandon thrasher thrasher's garage thank you my brother for allowing me to play with this thing um it was a uh it was an experience. It was definitely cool. Definitely cool. I'm really enjoying the just the regular, the foregrip, how it feels in the hand, just holding it. It's as good as it gets, honestly. 100% honesty. This grip right here, just holding it, is as good as it gets. Doing this, whew, it's really nice. It's really, really nice. You just keep going, boop, it's going to be right there. Not so bad. All right. So that's it for this one. I gotta go clean it up, oil it, get ready to send it back. Hi, I'm Donnie B all day. Until next knife.